please come a bit more to the front? I'll do it on the same side, I'll do it on the same side. Yeah, thank you very much. Then I would like to give the word to Florentine, who's going to give us a lecture today. So um, go ahead if you want. Okay, uh, welcome. Um, it's my first time in the trappenzaal, so uh, super nice, uh, super nice space. Also nice models. I don't know if they are really up to date, but uh, I just had a quick look. Look, uh, today I will uh, tell something about collective living and 3D modeling, and maybe it's a little bit weird combination, but in my opinion, it's really relevant also for the future, for a way of living, working, and um, uh, collaboration wi uh, with different people, different functions. Uh, and I will show you two projects where I worked for uh, on uh, in Orange Architects. I don't know if you know the office, but I will also introduce uh, the office a little bit. So the uh, question of this lecture is how a new standard for collective living came to life with 3D modeling. And hopefully um, I can answer that questions, uh, question. And if not, then uh, I would like to hear if you have other questions which are uh, relevant for this one. Uh, I will tell something about the office, BIM, uh, how we work with it within the office, different projects and uh, some quotes for the future for you as a student and the new world as an architect. The office of Orange Architects, we are an office uh, around 30 people. We are um, a set in uh, Rotterdam. Uh, the team is a combination of uh, women, men, young, a little bit older, uh, but especially young, uh, international, National uh, graduated in Eindhoven, Delft, the Academy in Rotterdam, or um, well, me as well. Um, so different people with two partners. We are uh, hands-on, proactive, and that's uh, mainly also the case for projects. We are an office of thinkers and makers. It sounds really like a dream, but it is because. Sometimes you start with a concept because you have a great idea, but sometimes you just have to start with it and then you come to an idea. So the combination of concept and craft is really relevant in all of our uh, projects. It can be in the uh, first phases, but it can be also in the latest phases because, uh, well, when the building becomes reality. So we are a multidisciplinary um, office, a firm with um, different skills. We are making architecture, buildings, but also urban plans, interiors. So these uh, projects um, are examples. The left one is uh, the Hutton's a housing project in uh, Rotterdam. Strijp S, you know, probably it's here in Eindhoven. And the right one is our smallest child it's the holiday home in Tessel. Really nice, we made the design uh, exterior, but also interior. And uh, there are people living during holiday with a lot of fun and chill modus. Then we use our knowledge. Uh, as I told, all the people in Orange are coming from different worlds. So we are not only Net uh, Dutch uh, people, we are also from Poland. India, uh, Russia, uh, Russia uh, Ukraine, well, name it. And we uh, share the knowledge and we share the experience and we transform, uh, transform it to new ideas. 
and then we come to the dreams and wishes of the clients. We are making local projects, but also unique projects. So we don't have a um, form to start with projects. We are always doing something else because the location is different, the context is uh, different, the question is different. So we are making unique projects. Nothing is uh, comparable with each other. And um, in the end, we want to make uh, something for the environment, to plus the environment, to make something special out of it. Um, we are mainly working on projects for housing, uh, row houses, apartments, um, but uh, most of the projects are combined with other uh, functions. So it can be commercial plint, uh, workspaces, public area, but also um, collective, communal spaces. And uh, with this, we want to make pleasant places in which we can live, work, or relax. And it's mainly about the people. So we believe in improving ourselves, but also the architecture and the world. So it's not only about making it because it's a question of the client, but we want to improve and in innovate the world. And that's uh, with the main principles of the sustainability. And that's all combined in the word together. It's not us as architects who wants to improve something, but it's something uh, we want to add as a people, the human being. So we can make a better living environment together. Together with you, you are the future. So that's why I think it's really important to also tell something about our sustainability mission. Sustainability in our office is built upon three pillars. World we value. And within those three, there are multiple uh, themes which are relevant for the main one. Uh, in the office, we have some innovation teams, and one of the innovation teams is sustainability. And with that team, there are uh, there's made a checklist for the together uh, ambition. And all the different teams are written there. And for every project, we check, so to say, uh, which uh, team is integrated or need to be integrated or if there's an opportunity to integrate it. Um, and it starts already with the first meeting with a client to discuss what the ambition is of the client. Sometimes the client also have um, uh, a quite large uh, document for sustainability, sometimes not, or sometimes a little bit s too small in our opinion. So then we have a discussion about what we can do. Uh, the themes for uh, world are resources, circularity and nature. I think uh, especially resources and circularity are quite common. Uh, nature is also a common thing, but we can add a little bit extra with nature, with landscape, with the way of living in a building. So this example is Binnenrotte, also a project in Rotterdam. And here we integrated, so to say, the sun panels in the roof. Uh, then the next uh, theme is we, and that's about well-being, health, and social. And especially social, I really like because uh, sustainability is mainly um, in discussions. It's about energy, about landscape, about uh, re um, reuse of materials, but it's also about social how you can activate people to walk the stairs instead of taking the elevator. Um, how you can make spaces where people can meet because they can learn from each other and not live their own uh, world or walk their own path. So I think the we is a really important thing and it's really special uh, for our office to integrate it in projects as well. And especially the two projects that I will show later are really about we. 
And the last one is value. Um, it's an important thing for us, but mainly all clients are really happy with this because we are architects, but we can also think about uh, adding value to projects. In the end, the client wants to aim some money with it. So it's nice to think about them, how we can activate the program, how it can be um, uh, interesting for the uh, economy reasons, um, and also the communal part, uh, which is a nice example in Jonas. It's this project which uh, I'm showing you here, but also later on. Uh, the communal spaces are really adding value to the project, but also to the context. It's not only on the scale of the building, but also of the surrounding. Then BIM. Um, within Orange, we have some innovation groups, as I thought already. One is the sustainability uh, uh, department, and the other one is BIM. Um, and BIM is really important in our workflow. Uh, we use Archicad for this, and uh, we experience the importance of BIM in many ways because it's internally uh, really useful to have a model to talk about or to discuss things, uh, but also to integrate all the other uh, disciplines of structural engineer, advisors in one model, and to have an overview. Um, and what the most uh, nice thing is of a 3D modeling is that our work is way much nicer because um, we start from uh, the first line until the last brick. We, we are making models in Archicad and everything is modeled. So if there is a question, we can show the client where it is and where it's all about or how we can change it, what kind of options there are. And for BIM, uh, the process, the importance is um, especially because the, all the information is, uh, is bundled. So you have everything you want to know about the project you have in one model. There is an open, transparent uh, communication, which is relevant. It's needed to have a nice BIM uh, project process. And the process is also continuing. So it's not stopping uh, after each phase because another uh, office will continue with the model. But we prefer to work from the first line until the last brick in the model. And then in the end, uh, it's of course an efficient working method. Um, so we use different tools. Archicad is uh, one of them, which is the, uh, the biggest, so to say. Um, but we are also partner in uh, the, uh, of the BIM BAS ELS, BIM BASE uh, IDS. Um, and there are all the rules set how we can work in a BIM process with other uh, companies. Um, it's also really important to support the open BIM uh, culture and uh, not uh, work on your own island with your own disciplines, but share your knowledge. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with BASIS, uh, BIM BAS CLS, but it's, uh, um, it's a small document with a lot of information and clearness. In our workflow, we work with different uh, uh, software. Uh, Solibri is also BIM-related, uh, BIM Collab as well. And the other uh, ones are um, yeah, extra, so to say. So uh, some of them we use for visuals, for rendering, other ones for VR. Um, we are also having a 3D printer. I think nowadays uh, for students also quite, well, normal. Um, in my time it wasn't. Uh, but it's really nice to also check some uh, volume studies, of course, and uh, have a quick look, but also the latest um, models we are making with 3D printer. Um, the base of the 3D model is in every project. So um, the model we use in every stage of a project with meetings with clients. If a client wants to know something, we can open the model. We can share them the uh, VR uh, scheme uh, screen and uh, we can walk through the questions there are. 
And also, it's nice to show, of course, uh, the way yeah, we want to work or tell our story. So it's not only a modeling thing to check technical things, but it's also a way of telling the story about the project. Um, and um, we, uh, within the office, uh, with the innovation groups, we are working on manuals. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit maybe uh, bored, but on the other hand, it makes very clear how we want to work. And if the structure is clear, then there's more time and uh, yeah, more time for fun and uh, freedom. So we have a manual for internal use about Archicad and BIM, uh, how we do things, how we set up a project, and we have a BIM protocol for external use. And we really believe that when the manuals are set, um, you have more time left for the nice part of the project instead of improving or <laughs> uh, um, discover every time again how you can arrange or set up a project. So also when you work uh, at Orange or you start at Orange, you start with some manuals which are well uh, sometimes big, sometimes small, but after uh, you can enjoy the nice projects of Orange. Uh, for internal use, it's set up with uh, many different uh, uh, ways of uh, working with uh, modules, with graphical things. So also our orange uh, drawing style is set, um, set up in the template. And we have also some internal meetings during the uh, year. So every month actually uh, to discuss some new subjects or special things to have a sort of lecture with each other to learn from each other. Um, I really believe that you don't have to find out the wheel yourself, but you can learn from each other. So it's better sharing is caring. Uh, for external um, uh, presentations or uh, meetings, we have also some uh, portfolios and presentations to show the clients or other ad advisors how we want to work and how we can collaborate with each other. Then the process. Um, we would like to um, work on projects from the beginning until the end. Uh, it doesn't happen every time because uh, sometimes a project is too big or sometimes we are working together with different offices, uh, architectural offices, and then they choose to um, uh, continue the model uh, within a different drawing office. Um, but we can work from sketch design until technical design on the model. And then the uh, level of detail is increasing every phase, of course. The first scenario, which is not our preferred, is the one that we are working on the IFC model until the building permit. And after we do only the aesthetic guidance, so then another office most of the times the drawing office will continue the model, but they will start over with the model. Uh, the other scenario is the one that we are working until the end, which is preferred, but sometimes it's not preferred because it's very, very project specific, um, not doable, or um, there is an, a better solution for the first scenario. Um, that was a little bit an overview of all the things where we were working or thinking about uh, within Orange. And the projects I want to show uh, are, are Jonas and Floating Gardens. Jonas is almost delivered. It's in Amsterdam uh, on Eiberg. It's the last spot uh, on Eiberg um, Island. And the name of Jonas is a reference to Jonas and the Will. I don't know if you know that story. Um, but it's really um, telling the story of Jonas, uh, the building from the outside. It is different. It's really black and dark and massive. And from the inside, you have a big surprise. And it starts all with a necklace of activities. So there is a living room, which is communal space for the housing uh, uh, for the residents, but also for the neighborhood. So during the day, people can enter the living room, it's public uh, uh, accessible. And there are different other things. So there's a canyon where you can walk through. 
There's a uh, patio with uh, very nice trees. There's also a beach on the rooftop. So the public route is through the building. You can enter uh, um, in the front square and you can walk through the canyon to the trees, uh, the forest, and um, the residents can also walk the mountain path to the rooftop and then they will find a beach. Um, in the tender phase, we promise a lot. Water on the roof, wooden canyon, lamellas, um, a living room with a nice bar, uh, a cinema, all those things, and it's all happened. So that's really amazing. We are really proud of this project. And this is um, what we promised in the uh, tender phase, and this is what happened. So the only the interior parts are not finished yet, but there is really a rooftop on the uh, rooftop beach with water floating on the glass uh, light, and there is a patio with a forest, and the mountain path is really going to bring you to the rooftop. So this is what uh, Jonas became. There are some nice facts um, about the housing uh, topologies. Uh, it's mainly uh, studios, and all the studios, they are around 44, 48 square meters and we make them a little bit smaller because the question was ultimately 50 square meters, also because of some regulations of Baubersluit. But the ultimate um, limit was 50 square meters and then we had a discussion with the client, can we make all the studios a little bit smaller and then collect all those extra square meters that we lose into communal spaces. And that's why it makes it happen to make the, um, well, quite some communal spaces, I think over 500 square meters in total, with a living room, with a cinema, with a yoga space, uh, workspaces, and it's all shared. So all residents can use that space for free because they use, uh, they pay some service costs. So some square meters, it's around two or three square meters of your own house is not in your studio, it's in the communal space. Another nice detail of Jonas is the facade, the outside facade. We start with a wooden cladding, uh, but uh, for fire uh, regulations, it, it wasn't possible to, um, to make this happen because uh, the rules were changed and the fabric of the wood can't, um, how do you say, can get the certificate to prove that they, they um, make sure that they follow the rules. So we change into zinc. And in the model, we uh, model the different uh, facades and with the different colors, you see the different profiles. And then we also did the study of a pattern and what the, what the nicest thing of this facade is that when you come closer, you see more detail. So from further, you see the different profiles and then you come uh, closer and then you see this pattern and the last thing that we add is a small eye as a link to the Jonas and the wall, uh, the wheel. And this is then a one-to-one -one fragment which is built to check the colors. Afterwards, we change the colors of the window frame, but there are some dots here visible of the fish. And this is the result of the building. Then the other project. I just yeah. it's about floating gardens. We are almost on the highest point point um on the construction site. It's um a nineteen floor high tower, uh, but it's not only a tower. The specialty of this project is that there is a school in the plinth and it's a nearby uh, Sloterdijk station, which is uh, an area which is, well, changing a lot in the coming years. And we are almost the first project and the enter entrance of uh, Sloterdijk Centrum. Um, also here we make some collective uh, spaces. Here we didn't do the trick of square meters 
um, exclude from your studio and share them together, but we um, get the uh, uh, improvement or yeah, we get proof to uh, the, uh, of the client to make a collective living room of around 300 square meters in the middle of the building. So you see here uh, in the render the position of the living room and there's also a combination of housing topologies but all the residents can use this living room. It's not public accessible so that's really a change or a difference uh, in between Jonas and Floating Gardens uh, but it's in the heart of the building. Here you see the mixed uh, use of the program. The school is in the plint, which is separate from the housing program. And the blue and orange uh, color is uh, housing. And then the living room you see in the heart of the building. And the living room uh, connects also the outside space. So there is a patio, which is a uh, quiet space. And you have some collective garden on the fifth uh, floor, which nice uh, view over the park. And in a uh, section you see uh, see this as well. So the patio is a quiet space and the um, roof uh, gardens are splitting all the volumes. And that's also visible here. So the concept of the uh, architectural um, uh, uh, materials, colors um, concept is that there are different volumes stacking on each other. Uh, and the in-between layers are linked with roof gardens. So uh, they are um, with wood cladding and the other volumes, the white volumes, are with aluminium. This is the uh, situation underneath the canopy. And this is uh, a nice thing that we um, come to um, an agreement with the municipality because in, uh, in the first uh, ideas of the plot, uh, the building can can be only until here, but we would like to make a canopy because of the entrance uh, of the area. And in the end, we make a canopy of almost eight meters high with two enormous columns, um, which we translated into sort of trees who holding up the canopy. Well, you see the skill of this person. It's not... Um, um, well, it's a normal person, it's not really small, it's not really big, but the canopy is almost eight meters, and it's the sa at the same moment, it's the outside space for the school. So when it's raining, it's like this today, then uh, people or children can play outside, which is a nice thing. For the uh, facade, it was uh, also uh, quite a challenge because the sound pollution was quite high here. Uh, because of the train station, uh, because of the industry uh, on the north, and there was a road on the south side, and of course um, uh, the uh, Schiphol was also uh, giving some sound uh, pollution. So for the solution of the uh, facade, we make well, I think 75% uh, of the facade is closed, which is maybe a bit of a shame, but it gives us some opportunity to make an extra dimension or integra uh, integral um, facade, um, which can be used for the sound, but also for other uh, regulations like wind. Uh, you can sit in the shadow, and we um, make a differentiation into the volumes with aluminium and the snedes, so the cuts with the wooden cladding. Um, and uh, with this solution, we can prove that the sound pollution is uh, nice uh, on uh, when you sit outside. So uh, people can use the outside space without um, having a lot of sound uh, there. And for the materials, we use a sort of barcode pat pattern uh, for the glass uh, facade and we also uh, name it the outer skin uh, which is fully white uh, with the bands. Um, and also here we make this project um, in uh, Archicad from uh, 2D detail into a 3D model and that's of course um, 
uh, uh, process which is continuous uh, synchronizing to the N3D. Uh, we just see the level of detail of the 3D model uh, quite improved there. Uh, this project we didn't do until the technical design. So even this uh, image show you, uh, yeah, shows you a lot of uh, details, but it's uh, just a DO phase. Uh, and now we are uh, do the, the aesthetic guidance on uh, the construction site. And here you see really uh, how it will be uh, done. So the different materials, the different uh, horizontal bands, that's maybe I that what I forgot to tell, but these horizontal bands are really <laughs> relevant <laughs> because they are uh, full of sun panels. So this facade um, uh, has a lot of uh, PV panels in it and also on the roof gardens, but uh, well, the question from the municipality was quite high. So we, would, uh, yeah, we were thinking how we can solve this. And when we started with the project in 2017, it was not really common to have sun panels in white. So I think there was um, maybe two uh, products, one with foil and one is with glass. Uh, well, the foil was not really nice. Uh, the glass was okay. Um, but now, luckily for us, five years later, uh, there are well m nice examples of um, sun panels in the color of white. So in reality, we can make it happen to make it really sun panel facade which is a nice uh, fact, of course, for the future. And this is the status quo on the moment. Uh, we are on the 16th floor, I think. Uh, you see here already the aluminium cladding, and on this upper floors, it's only the casco. But uh, we will uh, get in there. Then the last part is about the future. I'm a little bit older than you, but I also started as an architect. And for me, it's the nice thing to make uh, architecture for people. And that's, I think, what all the architects are saying. And then you think, oh, okay, well, that boring story again. But I think it's important to say again, because you don't make architecture for yourself, because then you are out of work already soon. But you make it for young and older people, for different people. And what I really like of being an architect is that I can create a place that brings people together. So it's not only for me as an architect to make, make an icon, but it can be a place where people can meet. And we are doing with Orange quite different projects. There's nothing the same. And the skill is different, the materials are different, the colors are different, the story is every time different. And that's also something I would like to give, uh, give you to think about that. Don't be an architect to make just always icons. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's really nice. Like here in uh, Eindhoven, it's nice that there is an I icon but it's not necessary to start with the idea to make an icon. So be curious, have fun, and make it work. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Florentine, for this lecture. Uh, I would like to thank you and give you some Geops wine as a present. Um, for everyone that needs their my future points, at the top of the trapezaal, you, you can write your name down with your student number. You're only allowed to write down your own name and your own student number. Um, for the rest, this evening, Geops is also organizing the faculty party. If you don't have tickets yet, go get them, please, because it will be very fun. Um, if you have any questions for Florentine left, don't be afraid to ask them or come to the front and talk with her. Thank you very much. <laughs>